What's up? Good morning, church. My name is AJ, and I'm the student pastor here at Church With You, and I am so excited to welcome you to Church With You's online experience. But not just that, I want to say a great big thank you to everybody for not just attending church this morning, but, but for being the church. Specifically, I want to say thank you for being the church with your generosity, because while we may not have been able to meet last week here like in person, what we were able to do is this. Our church was able to reach over 8,000 people online. That means over 8,000 people had an opportunity to attend church and that's all because of your generosity in tithes and offerings. And not only that, over 900 people actually attended church with you this past week. That is 900 plus people were commenting, they were praying for people, they were celebrating, they were singing all the way through the message and that is all because of you. We are hearing incredible stories. In fact, we're, we're hearing stories like this one of a student who told us that, that she had to move out of her house just a couple of years ago because she was dealing with abuse. She felt hopeless, she felt alone and she wanted to send a story to us saying thank you for us being able to create a way that she can still participate, that she can still feel included, that she can still have community and have some hope. And that is all because of your generosity. So hey, if you're already a part of church with you and maybe you've been given online or through our app, we wanna encourage you to continue to do that. But if you're new here, if you're just starting to join us at church with you, we wanna give you a super easy way that you could potentially jump in and start to give. And that's by doing just this simple thing. Text the word church with you to 77977. And that's gonna take you straight to our website where you have an easy way to give right then. But maybe giving is not your next step. See, we understand that for some of us here, we may actually be in a place where we're a lot like that student who sent us a story. Maybe not dealing with abuse, but dealing with hopelessness. And what I wanna tell you this morning is this, that you don't have to be hopeless anymore. Instead, your hope can begin this morning. And his, his name is Jesus. If you did that this morning, let me tell you, your brand new future starts today and we wanna celebrate it with you. So all we're asking you to do is just to send us your information right now. There's gonna be a number on the screen. And if you'll text the information that we're asking for to that number, we're gonna be able to reach out to you, help you celebrate and help you take the next best steps of your life. But right now, we're gonna stand to our feet wherever we are, I guess unless you're driving, probably don't do it then, but we're gonna all get up together and we're about to sing out some praise this morning. So come on church, here we go.
sing that again. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you.
Lift up a shout of praise this morning. Well, good morning, everybody. How we doing? Hey, man, I'm excited that you are jumping in on Church With You's online experience. And welcome to week two of a series that we started last week called Do It Afraid. Do It Afraid. Talking about life. Because how many of you know there are fears and worries and anxieties in our life? Like it, it doesn't matter. It's not just the COVID-19 crisis that, that is on our hands. We go through fear and worry and anxiety. Like we, we deal with that all the time. And here's the thing. We can't let fear and worry and anxiety stop us from living the life that Jesus has called us to live. So we're just going to do it. We're going to do life. We're just going to do it afraid. So welcome to week two of that. And, uh, and here's the thing. I just believe that I have something that's going to help somebody today. It's going to help you. It's going to free you up from fear today. I'm not talking about the fear that you may have over your life over the past two days or two weeks. I'm talking about somebody who has been held back from walking into what Jesus has for them for years. For years, you're watching this morning and you're watching right now going, I'm not, that's me, that's me. I'm helping you out today. Listen, we're going to free you up from that fear and anxiety and worry so that you can step into what Jesus has for you in Jesus' name. Come on, today you are not going to be a squirrel, you're going to be a lion. And that was not a moment where I was in the middle of preaching and went, squirrel. Like that, that was not it. Like that, that was for real. Like, I, like I'm going somewhere with this. You are not a squirrel. You are a lion. Hey, listen, I live in a, uh, in a neighborhood. It's a mature neighborhood. Got a lot of mature trees all the way around it. And I got a bunch in my backyard. But here's the deal. With, with mature trees comes a whole bunch of squirrels. A whole bunch of them. Man, my backyard is filled with squirrels. If the apocalypse happens, man, just come to my house. We're going to need some squirrel. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's all over the backyard. But what I've noticed about squirrels is when we have our blinds up uh, in the back of the house toward the backyard is you can be watching a squirrel. And you can, you can stand up, start walking to the kitchen. And I'm in the middle of walking to the kitchen. And they're doing their whole deal. If they peek up and see me, it's like, Freeze. Like free, they, they're trying to figure out, okay, is this dude going to take a step toward me or not? And to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter. Like I can, I can do one of those things, like I like messing with them sometimes, and I can do one of those, oh, like that thing to them. And when I do that, they bolt up a tree. Or I can just go, you know what, I'm not worried about you today. I'm worried about my sweet tea in the fridge. Like, and I can take a step toward the fridge. It doesn't matter. They bolt either way. And the reason that they bolt either way is because there is a nature that is wired in them to be afraid. Like they have a nature of being timid. They have a nature of being a little bit skeptical of everything walking around on the outside of, of where they're living. So they, they're skeptical of that. So it doesn't really matter if you're trying to go after them or not. They bolt with the best of them. But what I want to compare that with is uh, I got an opportunity uh, a couple of years ago to go on a safari in Kenya. And you're in this Jeep, you know, you're in this Jeep, whole, you're driving around, you know, they're showing you elephants and rhinos and all that stuff. And uh, what was cool is we rolled up one day, we were driving in the Jeep one day, we rolled up on five lions. Five lions. Now, now let, me, let me back up just a second and tell you, now I am the person inside of what I think is a safe place. And I'm going, do these lions know that they can jump right through these windows in this Jeep and they can just shred us apart. Do they know that? Like I'm sitting here in fear now, but knowing that all that dude has to do this driving is just hit the gas and we're gone, right? But now I'm scared of those lions, but guess who wasn't scared? The lions. Like they didn't care. They didn't care that we were rolling up in a Jeep. They didn't care that we were like 15 feet from them. They, they, it did not bother them one bit that we were rolling up into this Jeep to kind of look at them, to scope them out. It, did, it didn't matter to them. You know why? Because it is not in their nature to run. It's not in their nature to be afraid. Come on, they are the king of the jungle. Man, it is not in their nature to do it. So as followers of Jesus, can I tell you this morning that you are not a squirrel, 
You are a lion. You're going to love this, man. This is going to free you up for the rest of the message today. But, but this one verse that I'm about to show you in Proverbs, man, I believe that this verse is going to speak to you. And I believe that it's going to free you up from a life of fear and anxiety and worry. Are you ready? Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, it says this. The wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as lions. Come on, somebody. You are bold as a lion. If you're a follower of Jesus in here today, you don't have the nature of a squirrel. You have the nature of a lion in your life. The Bible says that Jesus is the lion of Judah. If you're a follower of Jesus, then you have the nature of the lion of Judah inside of you. Come on, so we can stand in the face of fear. We can stand in the face of worry. We can stand in the face of anxiety and whatever's going on in our lives. And we can stand bold because we don't have the nature of a squirrel. We have the nature of a lion. And even in the middle of us physically distancing ourselves from each other, come on, social distancing, in the middle of doing that, can I just tell you, in the middle of your distancing yourselves from other people, your life doesn't have to be disturbed because of the circumstances and the situations that you see in the world around you because you have the nature of a lion. Come on, the title of my message today is distanced but not disturbed. Distanced but not disturbed. Even in the middle of us social distancing ourselves from each other, even in the middle of us not physically being able to have church together, come on, we're not gonna be disturbed in our spirits because we can have church together online. Come on, we are the church and we have the spirit of the Lion of Judah on the inside of us and we will fight, we will stand bold in the face of everything that is going on in our lives. Like, and I just need you to know that today. Come on, I'm going to walk you through a passage in Scripture that shows this to you. We're, we meet a guy in the book of Judges. His name is Gideon. And Gideon, is, uh, he, he is, he's distanced himself from where God wants him to be and where he actually is. Like he's walked away from where God designed him to be. And he's put a little distance in between there to where he actually wants to be. You see, the little backstory of what's going on in the book of Judges when we get to it is that uh, God actually told Joshua, hey, every place that you touch, every place, like he's leading the people of Israel, every place that your feet touches, I'm going to give it to you. Right? So that's Joshua's command. That's his promise. It's take a step wherever your feet touch, I'm going to give you that land. And then a generation or so later, you get Gideon. But what Gideon has done now, instead of living in this land that God wants them to live in, instead of this wide open place that God designed them to live, Gideon and the people of Israel had gotten a little bit of afraid of these people called the Midianites. Because the Midianites had come in and they were going to take all of the grain and the crops and their food. They were probably going to steal all their stuff. They were going to take some of their lives. Come on, they, they had gotten afraid and in fear, Gideon had distanced himself from where God wanted him to be because he was afraid of the enemy that was trying to attack him. So that's the backstory of Gideon. So we're going to pick up Judges chapter 6, verse 12. This is what it says. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now let's just be honest real quick. If, if God would show up right now in our situation and he would call out to us and he said, hey, hey, mighty warrior. If we were honest, you would probably do the same thing I would do, which is probably like, you, you talking to me? My, my, mighty warrior. I ain't no mighty warrior. You, you, brother, you got, the wrong, you got the wrong guy. But you got the wrong guy. And that's what, that's what Gideon was facing. That's exactly how he replied. Look at how he replied to him. He said, pardon me, my Lord. Right, part, <laughs> you got the wrong guy. Like you're talking to me. I am not a mighty warrior. And what I find interesting is that the distance between where God wanted Gideon and the place that he was, in the distance, it started to disturb his identity and he forgot who God designed him to be. The distance disturbed his identity and Gideon forgot. God didn't forget, right? God showed up and he's like, hey man, mighty warrior, Mighty warrior, here's what I want from you. I want you to save Israel. You go down, you defeat the Midianites, I'm going to give them over to you. It's going to be awesome. But then for the second time, <laughs> look at how Gideon replies. He said, pardon me, same, same reply. Are you sure you got the right one? 
you sure? But how, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. Come on, can I just challenge you this morning that even in the middle of social distancing, don't let that distance disturb your identity. Don't forget who you are. Because the distance made Gideon forget that he was a mighty warrior, and now he's the weakest and he is the least. Don't let the distance between the people who, are, who normally are physically around in you, build, building you up, don't let that distance disturb your identity. That's what I love about God is he doesn't, he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop in the middle of, of what's going on in Gideon's life and in the middle of what he's feeling and go, you know what, you're probably right. No, God is always reminding us of who we are. So look at Judges chapter 6, verse 16. It says, the Lord answered, I will be with you. Let me, rem let me remind you of the promise that I gave you. I gave you a promise that said I would never leave you. I would never forsake you. I would always be with you. I told Joshua every place that his feet touch, I would give him that land. Let me remind you, number one, that I am with you. Then number two, let me remind you of what you are capable of. You will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. And then Gideon replied, he says, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. <laughs> I love this. I, lo I love this because the Bible tells you Gideon's process. Like we, this is our process too. Like don't, don't we have some of these processes? Like Gideon got to the place, he was like, okay, like God, I don't, I don't know who I am. I'm not a mighty warrior. God goes, no, you are a mighty warrior. I'm with you. You're going to go down. You're going to defeat the Midianites. It's going to be awesome. Like that, it's you. And then Gideon's like, okay, I'm coming. Like I'm believing some of this. I, I'm believing. I'm standing up from some fear. I'm standing up from some anxiety. But is that really you talking to me? Come on, we have those same processes in our life. God, if you'll get me out of this jam. I'll never do it again to get myself into that jam again. I'll never get back in it. Come on, we, we have those process. Like you, you pray for God to give you kids, and he gave you kids, and he made you a promise. He said, I'm going to give you kids, and your kids are going to love Jesus with all their heart, and they're going to be world changers for me. And then now you've been in quarantine, and they've been out of school for two weeks, and you're looking at God, and you're going, these kids? Look <laughs> at was, was that really you when you were talking about these kids? You, you got it, you got it. You, you brought that promise to another family. You didn't mean mine because the, these kids? Come on, we do that in our own lives too as adults, do we not? And we, we look at God prov as a provider and he says, I will provide for you. He tells you over and over in scripture, hey, listen, those who follow after me, their kids will not ever beg for bread. I will give you everything that you need. And now you're in the middle of this crisis that we're in and maybe you're looking at a pink slip. Maybe you're looking at dried up work. Maybe you're looking at his promise and you're going, God, was that really you? Because everything I see around me right now, is not what you promised. Is that, is that really you? Come on, Gideon had the same process. It's the same process you and I have. It's the same process. And then it goes on, chapter 7, it says this. It says, during the night, the Lord said to Gideon, get up and go. Come on, I like this. I like this. In the middle of the process that Gideon was working through, okay, I'm, I'm having trouble believing, I'm having trouble believing, but I, I'm going to try. Is it really you? Like, show me a sign. Like, like do something. Show, show me that it's really you talking to me. But what I love about Gideon is even in the middle of the fear and anxiety and worry, he never stopped. Once God reminded him of who he was, he never stopped. Once God came in and said, hey, mighty warrior, once Gideon's... Life got sparked up by that comment that God made. Once he understood that he didn't have the nature of a squirrel, that he had the nature of a lion, once he understood that, Gideon didn't stop. He did it afraid. He did life afraid. God looked at him and said, get up, go down against the camp, because I'm going to give it to you into your hand. And if you are afraid to attack, I love this. Like God says, I know you're going to ask for another sign. 
I know there'll be another time in your life. It's not going to be the COVID-19 crisis at that point, but there'll be another time a year from now where you're drowning in fear and in worry and in anxiety. You're drowning in all that. You'll be afraid again. And if you're afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they're saying. And then Gideon did that. Look at what it says. Gideon arrived just as the man was telling a friend his dream. I had a dream. A round, of, a round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. To which I would have responded, that's the dumbest dream I think I've ever heard. Right? But his friend responds, and he says this. He said, oh, I understand what that is. This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given him the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. It's not how I would have responded, but that's how his friend responded. There's a, this can only be, it can be none other than God has given Gideon everything. And then look at verse 15. It says, when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed and he worshiped. He returned to the camp of Israel and he called out, get up. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. I love this. He just did it afraid. Even in the middle of a sphere, even in the middle of the uncertainty, even in the middle of the worry and the anxiety, even in the middle of, uh, of, of the distance between him and God. What I love is, is once Gideon started closing the distance between him and where God wanted him to be, he started seeing more and more clear his identity that God had given him. See, he had forgotten his nature. And I think there are people watching this morning that have forgotten your nature. You've been running from fear. You've been laying down in a bed of worry. You've been living a life controlled by the anxiety in your life. And can I tell you right now, I came to tell you, get up. Get up. Get up from your fear. Get up from your worry. Get up from your anxiety. Come on, yeah, you do have a real enemy that's coming after you. And he does seek to steal, kill, and destroy your life. But there is no, even though we are socially distancing ourselves right now, then there is no way that your enemy can distance you from the love of Jesus, which is in his showing to you that he loves you and he cares for you and he took your sin and he took your shame and he took your guilt. Come on, there is nothing in his effort as far as your enemy that will be able to separate you from from the love that God has for you in Jesus. Come on, there is none of that. So you can look at your enemy today and you can tell him, I do not have the spirit of a squirrel. I got the spirit of the lion of Judah in my life. And it doesn't matter who you say I am. I am a mighty warrior. I am not stuck. I am a child of God. I am not going to be controlled by fear. I am not going to be living in a worry mentality. This is not who I am. Satan, you have no control over my life. It doesn't matter what he's telling you right now in this place. Let me just tell you, God has given you a spirit of a lion and you can stand bold you can stand bold in the middle of your uncertainty you can stand bold in the middle of your fear you can stand bold in the middle of your worry and anxiety you can stand bold that is your nature that he has put in your life the state satan cannot overtake you and overcome you and there is no amount of worry and stress and anxiety and fear that can rule over your life i'm not being held back anymore i'm stepping in to the nature that Jesus has for me. Come on, church, let's celebrate that this morning, right where you are. Come on, drop some comments, clapping some hands. Come on, come on, let's get up, let's get up. Come on, right to your feet, right now in every living room across my voice. Right now, every living room, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. You have a God who loves you. You have a God who cares for you. He is not absent right now. He is not distant right now. Even though we're practicing social distancing, he is close to you. The Bible says he is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He's close to you right now. He has put a spirit of a lion inside of your life so that you can stand firm in the midst of uncertainty, not because of your life, but because of the rock that you can build your life on. So we're just gonna make a declaration over our life this morning. I just want us to 
shout it out together. I'm going to walk you through it, and we're going to get on the same page, and we're going to do the whole one, two, three thing, but I really want you to shout this over your life. I want you to believe this over your life. If you don't get anything else today, this is what I want you to get. Is the place I once stooped in fear is now the place I stand in victory in Jesus' name. Come on, we're going to declare this over our life. The place I once stooped in fear is now the place I stand in victory in Jesus' name. Come on, that pink slip. The uncertainty with the job situation. The place I once stooped in fear when it came to my employment is now the place I stand in victory in Jesus' name. Come on, your finances, your checkbook, you're looking at what's coming in and what's going out. You're standing in fear that you won't have everything that you need. The place you stooped in fear is now the place you're going to stand in victory in Jesus' name. Come on, we're going to shout this over our lives. Are you ready? We're going to shout this over our lives together. I don't care where you're at. Stand in your living room right to your feet. We're going to shout it out to the top of our lungs. We're going to shout this out and we're going to believe it this morning. We're going to believe it on the count of three. You ready? One, two, three. The place I once stooped in fear is now the place I stand in victory in Jesus' name. Come on, say it again. The place I once stooped in fear is now the place I stand in victory in Jesus' name. Come on, God did not give you a spirit of a squirrel. He gave you a spirit of a lion. That the places that you have once stooped in fear will now become the place that you stand in victory. Not, not, not by your own power, but in Jesus' name. Come on, the place that I once stooped in fear is now the place that I stand in victory. In Jesus' name. Come on, church, I need you to get that. Walk free in the name of Jesus this morning. He has not given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of a lion. The lion of Judah in your life. The person who defeated sin, death, hell, and the grave for you is alive working in your life. So you can stand bold in the middle of the uncertainty and fear and worry and anxiety. You can stand bold this morning. Come on, somebody's going to leave today watching the live stream and they're going to be released from fear. You're going to be released from worry. And you're going to realize that it's not up to you. And you're going to realize that the places that you once stooped in fear are now the places you stand in victory because you've given those places in your life over to Jesus. And he's given you the boldness to stand there. But I know there's probably people watching this morning and you, you've never said yes to a relationship with Jesus. And can I tell you, it's only a matter of time. It might not be the COVID-19 crisis. It may be the next crisis. It may be a year from now, maybe two years from now. But you'll get to a place in your life where you realize that you have a spirit of a squirrel that you're just ready to run. It doesn't matter what's going on. Everything around you feels like it's falling through. The weight of the world is on top of you and you don't know how to get off of it. You're going to understand one day, and hopefully you'll understand that this morning, that you were never meant to live life apart from a relationship with Jesus. He is the one. He can take the spirit of the squirrel out of you and put the spirit of a lion inside of your heart so you can stand bold in the middle of the uncertainty. So if you've never said yes to a relationship with Jesus this morning, can I tell you, it's super simple. And he wants to give you that so that you can stand bold in the middle of everything that's going on in your life. So I'm just gonna lead you in a prayer. Right where you're watching, all I want you to do is I just want you to repeat this prayer out after me. There's nothing special about these words. What's special is how you mean it from your heart to God. So just right where you are. Say, Jesus, I need you. Come into my life. Forgive me. Thank you for taking my sin. Thank you for giving me new life. Put in me the spirit of a lion so that I can stand bold in the name of Jesus no matter what my circumstances look like. Create in me a new life, God. I want to follow you the best way I know how for the rest of my life. And can I tell you, if you prayed that prayer this morning, man, we want to know. We want to know that you made that decision. We want to know that you prayed that prayer. We want to know that you said yes to a relationship with Jesus. So here's what I want you to do is I want you to text this number right here. I want you to text Jesus 
to this number right here. We're going to leave it up on the screen for just a second for you. If you prayed that prayer, if you've accepted what Jesus has done for you, that he became your sin, he died for you to give you a brand new life. If you accept that this morning, then I just want you to text Jesus to that number right there just to let us know. And what we want to do is we want to help you walk through this new life that Jesus died to give you. Because, man, you just made the best decision that you will ever make in your lifetime. And we want to celebrate that with you. So text Jesus to that number that you see on the screen. Text Jesus. Let us know because we want to help you with that. We want to be in contact with you. We want to help you take your next steps because you have now walked out of the spirit of a squirrel and you've walked into a spirit of a lion. Come on, you can stand bold in Jesus' name. The places that I once stooped in fear are the places that you are now standing in victory in Jesus' name. Father, we love you and we thank you for who you are. And we thank you for your power. We thank you for how you love us and how you care for us. And God, we thank you that even in the middle of us social distancing ourselves from each other, God, our lives cannot be disturbed because you have put inside of us a nature of a lion who will stand bold in the middle of the circumstances. Our lives will not be disturbed this morning in Jesus' name. God, we give you glory and we give you honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Hey, we love you, church. So grateful that you joined us for week two of Do It Afraid and week two of Total Church Online. We can't wait to see you back next week. Love you guys. Have a great weekend.